A few weeks ago, I attempted to upgrade an iMac Pro. In doing so, I completely mangled the port on the motherboard that handles the display. That's not good at all. Which means I had a useless $1,500 computer. In an attempt to fix my mistake and potentially save my marriage, I'm going to make a studio display. The very first space gray studio display. So this is my redemption arc. The space gray studio display. Before Apple did it. Okay, so something very, very exciting came in the mail today. Look, so this is a board. Let me show you what this does. So what this board does right here is it takes the display output from either HDMI or DisplayPort, and what it does is it pushes it through the iMac Pro's display, so that way I can sort of get a studio display. I need to do a few things in the iMac Pro first. Because I'm special on one of the first space gray studio display, I was afforded the opportunity to remove the power port on the iMac. It is held together with glue that does not like to be unstuck, and I'm pretty sure it's what built Roman Road. Typically, most people will run cables through the RAM door, but I'm not afforded that luxury. But one thing I am is persistent, and after over an hour of trying, I looked at the camera and said, look what I got out. I completely ruined this thing on the way out. Basically, it's kind of like, you know, it's a little bit ruined, but I will have the first 5k space gray studio display this is the iMac Pro's chassis this is a space gray chassis I'm the only one that's going to be able to do this because I'm the only one dumb enough to break an iMac Pro what we've done is I've removed you can see the hole <laughs> hang on a second it's kind of hard to see actually so what we're going to do is we're going to run all the power and all of the data cables through that one hole. We have this board here, so we're gonna find a spot to mount this board. Worst case scenario, we got some we got some protection, some shielding on the back. I have some double-sided sticky tape that I'll probably end up using because I think that'll be that'll probably be the best way to get this in there, like in a clean sort of fashion. So what we'll do is I'm gonna put some double-sided sticky tape. That's it. <laughs> Look at these instructions. <laughs> Those are instructions. All right, DisplayPort and HDMI. So we have DisplayPort and HDMI officially installed. Oh, this is my iPhone SE 2020. I'm using it for a week in 2024. Check out that video. If I haven't posted it yet, check out a video. <laughs> I don't know which one of these are coming out of. <laughs> I've already messed this up once. This was some of the most tense, painstaking moments of this entire process. This cable, this exact cable, is why I ruined my iMac Pro in the first place. And after a lot of patience and a lot of practice, I eventually inserted the cable. After the cables were seated properly, I just needed to put the display back on the chassis and I held it down with some shipping tape. I'm plugging the cable in now. You will be the first to know if it works or not. Not sure which one of these is the power. I'm gonna start hitting them. Okay. Nothing. <gasps> Did you see that? After confirming the display actually works because I was a little worried that that's actually what I broke, I was finally able to plug in my MacBook Pro and see the beautiful 5K-ness. So it took me a second to dial in the settings, but I think these look very similar. All right, so what I need to do now is I need to get this set up on my desk, put some tape around it, more than just the one piece, and I need to get the DisplayPort hooked up so I can do 5K. In order to do that, I needed a DisplayPort to USB-C cable, which could be had on Amazon for about 12 bucks. And just a few days later, the cable came in. I bought a DisplayPort to USB-C cable. That way I don't need a dock. So I get to open up this iMac again for like the 15th time. If you're going to do this before you set the display with the final tape, I would really suggest just using shipping tape around the bezels. That way, in case you have to get back into the display, you're not constantly having to cut off and re-add the tape that actually holds the display in. After further deliberation I think I got the colors nailed I will tell you exactly what I did so you can replicate this for yourself I set the color profile on the iMac 5k as color LCD here are the color settings that I have set I have the backlight turned all the way up to 100 if you want to dial in your settings like mine that's exactly what I did and with that the final piece of the puzzle was complete so what do we have we have an extremely bright and color accurate 5k display that was purchased after several mistakes for around $700. You can connect to the display via USB-C, DisplayPort, and HDMI. 
So in that sense, it's actually more versatile than the traditional studio display that you would buy from Apple for $1,600. And while it doesn't have the USB-C pass-through and the ability to charge your laptop with just a single cable, it is still just a very, very good 5K monitor. And for less than half the price of a brand new studio display that you would buy from Apple, this is still built with that same Apple design language. You pretty much can't go wrong with this monitor. And I had the privilege to use this while editing this video for the past several days. And here are my initial thoughts. This is an unbelievable display. I'm not surprised it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable when I used it when it was a working computer before I broke it. It really does hold its own still. The 5K display, the colors, everything. This panel is remarkable. It's effectively the same panel they put in the new studio displays. There are some minor differences, but it's effectively the same model number that they just keep putting in all these 5K displays. They just a tiny bit tweak it. This display gets extremely bright. This display has remarkable color reproduction, but it's not all sunshine and rainbows. There's obviously a lot of DIY that you have to do in order to actually get this thing to work. You have to open up this display, which is not fun, and you're going to risk breaking it. And obviously, if you break the display, that's the entire value proposition of this is having a working 5K display. That's the whole point. So if you are to break it, you're SOL. Like you, you broke the one thing that you bought the computer for. So there's obviously that risk there. All of these 5K displays are going to be taped in. The benefit of going with a traditional iMac 5K, on the back of those, you can actually upgrade the RAM. So you can pop off that door and just use that to slide your everything through, as opposed to what I had to do, which took me like almost an hour and a half to actually get that stupid sticker power thing off. And now I don't even know if I'm going to be able to put that back on. That's one of the disadvantages of going with this. But obviously, I don't think most people are going to tear down an iMac Pro to make it into this display. But it is something to consider if you are looking at a computer. Maybe you consider going with an iMac Pro, buying it for about a thousand bucks, and then keeping it for the next two or three years, and then eventually sort of piecing it out, getting two or three years out of it, and then getting another four or five out of the monitor. So I have some numbers that I wanna go over here that just sort of walks you through exactly everything that I'm thinking. The first is what I did here. I bought an iMac Pro. And you're gonna buy one of these iMac Pros. I found some for as cheap as a thousand bucks. I bought mine for a little bit more. Granted, my parts were broken, so my parts are going to be worth a little bit less. But in your case, you could probably get anywhere from 600 to maybe $800 worth of parts, I would say, to be safe, about $600. That would be selling like the speaker assembly, that would be selling the logic board, the power supply, basically everything. You could get anywhere from six to $800, just the internal pieces. I would definitely err towards the lower end of that. The display board, which is standard that you're gonna have to buy, that costs 215 bucks, which brings your total price all in to $615 which is not bad compared to the actual price of a studio display that's gonna cost you about $1,600. The next option is the one I would probably suggest going with, which is an iMac and getting that 2020-ish iMac, if you can get 2020 or you get 2017, whatever you can find. The older the display, the worse the blacks are gonna look, the worse the colors are gonna look. They did get better even though they are sort of effectively the same model number. They do actually improve with each generation. So you could find one of those. I found one that was iCloud Lock for $350. The parts in that is are probably gonna be worth no more than 200. You might only get about 100 bucks for those parts, especially if it's like iCloud, iCloud Lock. But then if you buy the display board for two, another 215 and all in your price is gonna be about $365, I would probably suggest going that route. You won't spend more than 500 bucks if you do something like that. And what that's gonna leave you with is that's gonna leave you with a 5K display that has remarkable colors, great brightness, and it's gonna be very comparable in terms of an actual display to a studio display, which costs you $1,600. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like there's no value in the studio display. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, well, they're the exact same, and so definitely do what I did. If you're somebody that doesn't want a DIY, don't do this. If you're interested in DIY, definitely I would do it. I think if you are willing to take the risk, I think it's worth it. There are a few things you're gonna miss out on. Obviously, you're not going to get USB pass-through. That's something you could probably install yourself. There's a lot of empty room in this case. There are a lot of open ports on the back of this computer's body. So you could actually probably figure that out yourself. That's not something I was interested in doing because that's a lot of extra work <laughs> and I don't really need it, but that's something you're gonna lose out on. The it just works mantra of Apple stuff, you're not going to get that with this. While a lot of these parts are Apple. The actual brains running it is some other random, I, I, I think mine I bought from eBay and it shipped in from China. So you're not getting an Apple product per se. While yes, all of these things are technically Apple products, this is sort of like building a Hackintosh in the body of a Mac Pro. While yes, it sort of looks like a Mac, 
and it sort of looks like something Apple would make, it isn't something Apple made. And obviously, you're just going to not have support. Like, so if this breaks, you're screwed. You're not gonna go to Apple and they're gonna fix it for you. So there's a lot of value in the studio display. Studio display, I think, probably looks a little bit nicer. I love the space gray. I actually think this is the best looking one of these anybody's ever made. I'm obviously gonna be a little bit biased, you know? I made it. Like, the actual cost to get space gray is a lot. If this were something that I was going to keep for myself definitively, what I would do is I would get the 2017, 2020, I'd buy one of those iMacs, and then I would actually paint the entire chassis black. I think that would look so sick. Make sure you cover this with some tape. I think that would look so sick. It's hard to get a nice display with great brightness and remarkable colors, especially a 5K 60 hertz panel. Obviously you're not gonna game 60 hertz. I mean, I game at 60 hertz because I'm on a console. I don't really play video games, but when I do, I play at 60 hertz. So for me, it's not a big deal, but this is a content creation. If you are, if you are making things that require a nice display, that's what it's for, content creation. I think coders like the extra space that a 5K display gives you. This is for somebody who wants a premium 5K display, because I'm still talking about four, five, six, seven hundred dollars at the top end there. So you're gonna still spend a decent amount of money, but at the end of the day, compared to some of the other monitors on the market, this is a great option that you're gonna be getting at a great price, and I would really highly suggest that you do it. If you have any questions about it, I would try my best to answer them in the comment section. I will have a lot of information linked in the description down below, everything you could possibly need. That's pretty much it. I think this is a really fun thing, but know that this is a project that's gonna take you several days. There's gonna be mistakes here and there because stuff just always goes wrong when you DIY anything. But at the end of the day, once you get this color styled in, once you take the time to do that, it is definitely worth it. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, hit subscribe. I will see you in the next one. If you wanna see the videos on how I broke this display, I will have them linked right here right here so thank you for watching peace click the video oh my gosh click it